When you ask musicians and composers who inspires you, one of the names that comes up time and time again is Bach. Bach's extensive and varied collection of works have served as the inspiration for countless new pieces of music. For example, part of the melody from Bridge Over Troubled Water by Paul Simon was actually based on a Bach chorale. As Simon explains in this clip, what would become the iconic Bridge Over Troubled Water started with a melodic segment lifted from this Bach melody. So it started out with uh, me singing a, a song, the beginning of the song uh, I had. Da, 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 um, da, da, um. Now this part. That comes from a Bach piece. That comes from a, a, a Bach chorale. So that was in my mind, so that's how that part slipped in. The bark piece that Simon was inspired by was a tune known as O Sacred Head, Now Wounded. Even though we know that Paul Simon started with this segment of melody to write his tune, it's very hard to find anything that resembles Bach's original melody when looking at Bridge Over Troubled Water. The only similarity really that I could find is that the contour here on this part of Bridge Over Troubled Water's melody is similar to the contour in Bach's original melody here. But really, this just goes to show that even if you use an existing piece of music as the kicking off point of your new song, your resulting song doesn't have to sound anything like the original piece of music. Paul Simon actually used this very same Bach melody again when he wrote his song American Tune, and this time the similarities to Bach's melody are far, far clearer. Well, many is the time I've been On this occasion, Paul Simon has actually directly lifted the melody and chords from the original Bach chorale, and has set his own lyrics to it. Of course, Paul Simon is fully within his rights to do this, because the Bach melody, along with all of Bach's works, are in the public domain, and therefore anybody is free to use them however they please. Interestingly, just like Paul Simon, Bach himself used this tune on more than one occasion, featuring it in a variety of his works. But the similarities between Paul Simon and Bach's relationship with this tune don't just stop there. Both didn't just use the tune on multiple occasions, both actually borrowed the tune from a previous composition. Bach didn't actually write this melody, instead he borrowed it from an earlier hymn by Paul Gerhardt. But the story doesn't stop there, Gerhardt also didn't write the tune, he too borrowed it from an earlier work, this time by Hans Hassler. There's a clever irony involved here that a tune that Paul Simon has called American Tune is actually a 400 year old German tune. But this actually plays really well into the themes of American Tune. One of the lyrical themes of American Tune is the story and struggle of the original settlers who came to America. And in the same way that they were Europeans who became Americans, this piece of music which describes their story was a German tune that came to America and became an American tune. Another legendary songwriter to be inspired by Bach is Paul McCartney. The inspiration for the Beatles' legendary Blackbird actually came from a guitar arrangement of Bach's Bure in E minor that Paul and George used to play as a party piece. But we had a little piece which was like a, a party piece to, to, to show people that, you know, we weren't as stupid as we looked. And it was, it was by Bach, um, and it went like that. So 
So what we liked was the, as the melody, and then there's a, yeah. or whatever you know, the bass line going at the same time. That was uh, it's kind of hard, harder to do than anything we did. So uh, that was how we did it, but. We got it wrong. It should go. It goes on and on. Um, but we just truncated it and did it like short, like that. And that bit, I kind of always liked. So then I ended up adapting that years later, remembering this little thing we used to do into sort of. And just looking for all those little shapes. So it had a melody on the top and a little bass line. Paul describes how he and George liked how the bark piece featured a melody on top and a bass line underneath. This technique is actually called counterpoint and is something that Bach is well known for. Counterpoint is a musical texture where two or more melodies move independently from each other, however, while simultaneously creating a sense of harmony between them. So for example, in Bach's Bure in E minor, which is the piece that McCartney was inspired by, we have a top line. And a bass line. Both work as independent melodies with their own contour and rhythm. However, when the two are played together, they create a sense of harmony between them, despite the lack of any other accompaniment. The same is true of Blackbird. Blackbird features this top line and this bass line. Both perfectly nice melodies on their own, but once you put them together, it creates an elegant sense of harmony. Paul describes the process of writing Blackbird in his biography many years from now. I developed the melody on guitar based on the bark piece and took it somewhere else, took it to another level, then I just fitted the words to it. Looking at the music for Blackbird, you can see how McCartney has taken his inspiration from Bach, but then has continued in his own direction. For example, whereas Bach's piece features only two voices, a top line and a bass line, McCartney has used four voices three on the guitar, and the fourth sang by McCartney himself. On the guitar, much like the Bach piece, we have a bass line and we have a top line. But unlike the Bach piece, McCartney has also included a middle voice, which just pedals on the root note G, helping to glue all four voices together harmonically. Blackbird singing in the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly all your life You were only waiting for this moment to arise Lady Linda by the Beach Boys isn't just inspired by Bach but actually completely repurposes one of Bach's melodies. As Carl Wilson explains in this clip Beach Boys guitarist Alan Jardine based his song Lady Linda on the Bach melody Jesu Joy of Man Desiring. You didn't write this next song, though. No, Alan did. This is uh, a song by Alan Jardine. Lady Linda. Well, uh, has he written a lot of songs? Oh, yeah, several songs, many songs. And this song started off musically with J.C. Joy of Man's Desiring by Bach. Oh, oh, musically, and then Alan changed the melody and wrote the song about his wife, Linda. Lady Linda begins with a Baroque-inspired harpsichord part as a nod to the Bach influence. As you can hear, the intro is an unmodified rendition of the original Bach melody. But after this, the song enters a more typical Beach Boys style, and we get an adapted version of Bach's melody. Lady Linda, go with me. We can lie in the meadow.
The Beach Boys have modified the timing of Bach's original melody, spreading it out into 4-4 time, rather than the compound 9-8 time we had before. Al Jardine co-wrote Lady Linda with Beach Boys keyboard player Ron Altbach. Listen to Altbach explain here the writing process behind Lady Linda. One day I was up at Big Sur with Alan, and, uh, and he, 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 I was playing some Bach on his piano there. And I, I started playing one of the, the uh, chorale preludes, the uh, Jesu, Pride of Man's Desire, Joy of Man's Desire. I, I never remember, but you know, everybody knows it. Yeah, I'm sure everybody's heard that. And uh, anyway, I had the idea to... to I started playing, I started playing a little different, little different rhythm, you know. And um, he started humming, he started singing, he running around the room, he said, let's make a song. So I said, fine, let's make a song. So then he came up with some, he, he came up with some really nice words that goes, you know, about his wife, it was about Lady Linda, he called it, and it was a very pretty song. Not so much inspiration, but an outright tribute to Carter by the band Sky is basically a prog rock reimagining of Bach's famous Toccata and Fugue in D minor. Sky weren't even the first prog rock band to adapt Toccata though. Dutch prog band Exception released versions of Toccata in 1973 seven years before Sky's version went to number five in the UK single charts. And whilst we're discussing Toccata and Fugue, it's also fairly clear that Muse's plug-in baby took at least some inspiration from this classic bark piece. A more recent example of a song inspired by a bark piece is the song They by Jem. They is based on a sample of Bach's Prelude in F minor from the Well-Tempered Clavier Book 2. But listening to the sample, you may be thinking, that doesn't really sound like Bach. And that's because Jem didn't sample the original version of Bach's Prelude in F minor, but instead sampled the Swingle Singer's 1963 jazz arrangement of Prelude in F minor. So the pop song They, released in 2004, is based on a 1963 swing version of a bark piece released in the 1700s. My final example today, I've actually talked about in another video, but I've got to mention it here as well. It's A Whiter Shade of Pale by Prokham Harum. A Whiter Shade of Pale by Prokham Harum is based on orchestral suite number three in D major by Bach, better known by the name Air on a G string. I do remember having this musical idea, which I worked out on the piano, Air on a G string which was a Bach composition, and it came out. But I think when I got after about the first two bars, I think I got it wrong kind of thing, or didn't re remember where it went, but I just carried on in my own way. If I move Whiter Shade of Pale into the same key as Air on the G-String, it's quite clear that both pieces begin with the exact same descending chord progression and the same long suspended notes held over the top. But after two bars, just like Gary Brooker said in the interview, why the shade of pale diverges from air on a G-string. What Shakespeare is to Western literature is what Bach is to Western music. 
His extensive set of works offer a masterclass in melody, harmony and texture, and I'm sure his works will continue to influence composers and songwriters for centuries to come. If you can think of any other pop songs that were inspired by Bach, then do put them in the comments below. And after lots of people have pointed out that I don't actually play very much piano on my channel called David Bennett Piano, I thought I would take this opportunity to play this piece to you that I wrote inspired by Bach's Prelude in C. And as always, a massive thank you goes to my patrons, including Adam Granger, Andre Sainz Diaja, Andrew, Andrew Brown, Andy Deacon, Austin Barrett, Bob McKinstry, Brittany Parker, Bruce Mount, Cameron Olivaler, Chris Cabell, Kieran Bennon, Darren Harvey, D. David Lee Fish, David Defundifer, Dr. Darren Wicks, Eleanor Skorchenko, S. Ben Hansen, Eugene Leroy, Eyes, F. D. Hodor, Golfhouse, Guillermo Latona, James Ko, J. A. Cockensparger, Joe Watson, Jonas Soderstrom. Justin Vigor, Lavender Mint Rose, Meg Fellows, Melody Composer Squared, Michael Vivian, Nancy Gillard, Pablo Ocampo, Paul Miller, Paul Paisel, Peter Dunphy, Roger Clay, Snitzelcraft, C. Jean Kang, Steve Daly, Thomas Armstrong, Tim Beaker, Tim Payne, Toot, Vidad Flowers, and Vladimir Kodakov.